What's up, folks? My wife and I just got back from Tuscany, had a small vacation there, it was really cool. And um, as you can see, this video is gonna be about these two cameras here, or it's gonna include these two cameras here. It's less about cameras. It's uh, more about analog and film, not analog versus film. Um, I brought my Leica M7, as well as my Leica M10P with me, and it was primarily just to test out my new shooting style. So if you're interested to hear about that, hear about the motivation as well, check out the photos I got from my digital, as well as my film camera, which I, as you guessed it, still have to develop, then uh, stick around and, um, yeah, check it out. All right, it's about to get the film into this sucker right over here. In my case, I, I do uh, stand development. I've uh, mainly shot Ilford Pan at 50 plus on this um, trip. I had one roll of Ilford Pan, F, uh, Pan 400 in there, so let's get cracking. I'm, I'm just spooling up the film, my last roll. So, you know, when I talk about my new style of shooting, it's not really a new style, it's just that I'm shooting my Leica M7 alongside with my Leica M10P. And it's kind of cool to be able to shoot film and digital at the same time. And also then, you know, I'm sharing the same lenses in between. Um, yeah, and I, I, I shot film for about five years or, or six years straight. And uh, the other 10 years, uh, it was digital. Both have their pros and cons. And again, this is not, this is not really a versus thing. If, if I want to have flexibility and a lot of flexibility, then I find digital is fantastic. Digital is great to give me a lot of flexibility in post-production. It gives me a lot of flexibility if I'm not quite certain yet what kind of look I want to have. And I get to have my photos a lot quicker, right? So if I don't have time to develop and everything, digital is great. But film, there's... In general, there's something about the uh, aesthetic of film. With film, I make a lot of the choices before I actually sh actually shoot than after. Uh, if I if I'm not if I don't want to have that flexibility, because there is this inherent um, uh, freedom that you have when you don't have to choose and uh, decide. Okay, do I want to change the white balance or not? Do I want to increase the exposure or not? Too much, you know, after and post. Where it's like this is what I'm going to shoot. This is what it's going to look like. Um, I'm going to use this film, I'm going to use this color, it's going to be this black and white, and whatever. I, I like making those choices before sometimes, and then film is fantastic. One thing that I have to say, digital versus film, I, I, I've got a digital black and white that I like, uh, the look that I like, but I mean the film black and whites, right? I mean, they're just, um, for me, for me personally, I prefer them, you know? Um, so all the film is loaded. All right here, I just gotta mix up the chemical bath and then uh, get to developing and fixing and all that stuff. Um, I just wanna take a moment to talk about Ilford Pan at 50. It's an ISO 50 film. I ended up taking this one because we were going to Tuscany and I just saw, when I saw the weather report, it was just sun, 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 sun. So, and I knew I was gonna shoot primarily during the day. I figured, okay, let's go for this. And this is just a really cool film. It's I still remember the first day when I got back my negatives from the first uh, um, Ilford Pan F50 Plus that I that I shot. It was fantastic. I was blown away. I was blown away by those tones, by this, this the contrast that it had. It's just such a it's a fine grained, beautiful black and white film. And if you've never shot an, an Ilford Pan F Plus 50, you should definitely give it a try. That is, it's 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 absolutely worth it. So check it out. So. The film is in the sauce. Here it is. Um, film's in this canister over here. I'm doing a uh, uh, stand development of 1 to 100 ratio in uh, Rodinol. I've got around 3.5 milliliters per film. The, the film expired three years ago, and I didn't pull it back or anything like that. Um, so I shot ISO 50. Could have shot ISO, I don't know, 32, I think. But uh, I didn't want to. So. Um, I'm letting it sit in, in the uh, soup for about 75 minutes more. And this is my fixer, I'm getting it to a 20 degrees centigrade. So the thing about uh, shooting film and digital at the same time, it's just, I really like both. I, I think both are, are fantastic um, mediums. Uh, and I mentioned why before. There's a certain slow aspect to film as well, which I didn't mention, the fact that Every, the whole process is slower. The fact that you have to sit here and, well, I don't have to sit here, but you have to take your time to develop it. You could send it to a lab if you wanted to, but um, 
I like to develop it myself. It's just, we're in such a fast paced world that this, this slow down is something I really, really think is cool. Um, it helps me just free my mind, uh, helps me ga gather my thoughts sometimes. Um, that's uh, something I appreciate. I, I really have no idea what to expect from this film because what I have noticed on some of my Ilford Pan F50 Plus, where I have let it uh, go past the expiry date, is sometimes it's come out a little bit blotchy. There's There's been some irritation on the negative and I'm actually not quite sure where that comes from. Um, I, I don't mind so much because for me, it's it's part of the film experience and it, it, the film is just what it is. Film is film. Digital is perfect. You have this perfect plane and, um, and it makes these really clean clinical shots. And there's a time and place for that, which I think is it's really cool, where you can really make it work. And then there's other times where I just, I, I want to go for film and have the imperfections of film. At the same time though, you know, you've got this, these, these amazing tonalities. And it's just, there's a way that the film handles the transition from shadow to highlights that I, I just don't think digital quite, it, it's not, they don't have it there yet, you know? And maybe they never will, maybe that's not the intention. Maybe the intention is for it to be clinical. That's cool, that's fine. I'm so looking forward to seeing the results of this film right now. Um, I can't wait for it to, to, to speed up and get its development done. Um, and then still gotta dry it and then scan it, so it's gonna be a while. I'm gonna go and check out some of those uh, photos that I took with the M10P um, and then start doing some edits on them. So the editing of the digital photos and the scanning and the development uh, of the uh, Ilford Pan F50 Plus is done. What you will see here is a mixture of the images that I took on our vacation to Tuscany. All black and white are analog, except for two. Let me know in the comments below if you think you know which two are digital uh, taken on the Leica M10P and not on the Leica M7 and the Ilford Pan F50 Plus. Overall, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Having the Leica M7 and the M10P giving me that balance of digital and analog, and also letting me share the lenses between the two cameras, which reduced the size of my setup significantly. This definitely would not be the case if I was to take my Leica M10P and one of my medium format cameras. One thing that I did notice was the fact that whenever evening came around, I ended up taking my Leica M10P, so the digital camera, as opposed to the M7, because I only took ISO 50 film. So there the flexibility of digital really comes into play. And of course, all it means is that next time I'm gonna take some ISO 400 or ISO 1600 film with me as well. So thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what your setup is and if you've got a digital analog setup that you shoot side by side, I'd love to hear about that too. See you next time.